Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Phil Customs. So today I'm sharing with you a X-Men Beast Garage Kit that I just finished painting up for someone. Now, I did do a garage kit review on this uh, a little while ago. I will link that in the description. It's a pretty much straightforward kit. Uh, I forget who produced it. Uh, so I think somebody in the comments mentioned it if I forgot. Uh, but it's definitely sculpted by Eric Sosa. Only because during the video when I was looking at it, I realized I saw Sosa's name uh, etched into the foot back here. I think it was this one. Yeah, it says Sosa right there, so right away I know it was Eric Sosa. Um, really great sculpt, uh, really well designed as far as, uh, you know, the sculpt, engineered very well, um, and casted up amazingly. There's really no casting errors whatsoever, but there is uh, one thing that I found that was a problem. When I was uh, doing my garage kit review, I was putting the heads into the, uh, you know, up here, these heads in there, and I realized they weren't sticking. I couldn't figure out why. I figured the magnets were really weak. So I decided that, you know, after when I primed it up and I was ready to start painting, I put some uh, magnets and stuff on the heads and they were strong. I was like, okay, so those magnets are good. So when I tried to put magnets onto the neck on the body, nothing was sticking. And I realized when they casted up this item, they never put a magnet up there. Now, I don't know if it's like an issue with whoever produced these kits. Maybe owners just forgot on this one. I'm not really sure. But so what I had to do is I pretty much just went in here, which is kind of a little bit messy, but I drilled them out a hole and I added a magnet in there. So now all the heads go on there and there's no like worry of that. They might pop out by accident. Um, as far as you watch the kit review, uh, the body, upper body and arms are attached, which is kind of shocking. I thought those would have been separated, but I guess they did that because of all that fur. You can't really have a lot of seam lines. But this bottom part here is separate from these legs and torso. So you put the legs together onto the torso. They're magnetized. You put them into the base, and then you put the body on it, and it works out really well. So engineering, a uh, beautiful kit. Uh, Casting-wise, nice and clean. So it was just a matter of adding the magnet cleaning up the kit, priming it, and then painting it. Now, as far as paint work goes, uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, the Blue Beast, this is what the client wanted. You want to go for that 90s look where he's kind of like that bright blue, that cobalt uh, type of blue look to him. And that's kind of what we ran with. Uh, so what I did is I primed him up, and I pretty much just got a Duplicolor can of, I think it's like a navy uh, blue or something. And I did a basic blue uh, coating paint all over him. So... I did that because it's a little bit durable because it's car paint, plus it helps just cover everything and sit in it, instead of trying to sit there with an airbrush and get everything, so I just kind of ran with it. And then after that, I did a lot of layering. So it might not look like it's, you know, maybe in the camera, I'm not really sure if you can see one blue. It's not. There's a lot of different variations of blue in here to try to break it up. So if you look on his face, uh, you can see the face is a little bit lighter than the hair. Um, if you look on the fur on his hair, but you also look on the fur on the shoulder, you can see that that's a little bit of a darker blue. So I wanted to break up this blue a little bit over here. And then if you see on his forearm as well, you can see that that blue is a little bit darker than this here. Um, this might look like black shading, but it's actually not. It's all that dark navy blue from the uh, Duplicolor can and then some darker blues that were mixed in with it. I really didn't do any blacks onto him. Maybe certain areas in the face uh, a little bit, you know, to kind of give that dark look in the eyes and stuff. But I tried to keep it as much as dark blues as possible. You know, just try to really break it in there. And it was a lot of dry brushing, straightforward. Um, as far as the fingernails, you can kind of see I kind of, you know, ran with the fingernails and stuff. Um, pretty, uh, if you're seeing a little bit of a lighting, it's only because I glossed up the fingernails a little bit to make them a little bit shinier. Uh, same thing with the toenails. Now, I didn't go too yellow on them. I tried to keep them like more of a whitish slash bonish slash brown. I didn't want to go like... Uh, stained to the point where it looked like uh, brownish. I kind of wanted to keep it more bonish looking. I don't know, I just felt it worked a little bit better with uh, the whole entire, um, you know, look. Uh, as far as his uh, undies and outfit, uh, Belko, you know, you can just see it's a little bit of a darker uh, navy blue. Um, it kind of matches up the darker blues in here a little bit. And then a uh, basic yellow belt buckle with a little bit hints of orange around the stripes. And went from there. Now, as far as the base, we didn't go anything crazy with the base because uh, they wanted to keep the base uniformed with uh, the other like sideshow X Men that have the uh, red X bases. So he wants to keep all his like X Men uniformed. So he just kind of ran with that, which is good. You know, if you want to keep the whole team situated, it works out. Now, he does have the three heads. So this head's my favorite. I like this one the most. 
Uh, what he wanted me to do too is we had a little bit of drool in the mouth. You can kind of see there, there's a little bit of hint of drool in there. Um, the teeth may look pure white, but they're actually a very off white. Now, now before I painted up the blue, it looked very like yellowish teeth and stuff. But when you start adding all the other colors and everything, you break it out, it's not a super bright like white. It's kind of more of an offish white. Um, so that kind of just helps with teeth a little bit more. Uh, this eyes, if I'm not mistaken, these eyes have a little bit of a yellow tint to it. So that one has a little bit of yellow tint. This one right here is pretty much the same process, but these eyes are white. So that one uh, is white. Um, you can also kind of see in the eyebrows, I did a little bit of darker blue in the eyebrows here and there. Which is pretty cool. That head uh, feels more of a Wolverine head to me though. That almost feels like it's kind of more Wolverine, even though Beast and him sort of kind of look the same. But... It, it kind of looks like some of the other Eric Sosa's like Wolverine heads a bit. But this one right here is definitely off of a uh, artist. I kind of forget. I'm so bad with artists. I, I just kind of read the books and like the character. I really never cared about which artist drew what. I was kind of always just into the stories and characters. Uh, but you probably, I'm pretty sure some people in comments can let me know. Which I'm not really a fan of that. That's too old school for me. I'm more of the, like the 90s look. But so this one's kind of my favorite so if this was a statue if i ever owned this one that would be the head i would like on it the most i think that just screams 90s to me but other than that that's the beast kit uh really great kit um had a lot of fun with it uh it's so well done it's absolutely beautiful i think this is definitely like you know this is like the beast kit i think out there it seems like a lot of my friends too like this one a lot as well so let me know what you guys think thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos